In this video, we're going to look at the basic syntax of Racket, how expressions are constructed, and in particular, focus on how parentheses are used in Racket expressions, since that's a little different than what people might be used to. It's actually a very simple, consistent usage that once you get your head around it, it has a lot of really nice properties, but it is a little unusual when you first see it. So the first thing we need to do before we start, though, is make sure we're using the right language in Dr. Racket. Dr. Racket, as a programming environment, supports a number of different languages, ranging from beginning languages, which is where we'll start, up to more advanced languages, which is where we'll end up later in the semester. The beginning languages, for example, have features that allow Rack Dr. Racket to provide better, more useful error messages for people that are just learning Racket. And so there's two places where we can specify what language we're using. The first is in the language menu, where we can say choose language. Alternatively, we can see here at the bottom left of the window, it tells us what language we're using, which is currently beginning student, which is the language we actually want. If we click here, we get a list of languages and we can choose uh, a different language here, which later on we'll need to do. Or we can again choose language by selecting this if the language that we want doesn't appear in this list. I'm going to stick for the moment with just beginning student. I think that's where yours will probably start out as well. But if you don't have beginning student here, make sure that you choose beginning student. Um, and later on, if you find that things just are acting weird and you're getting unexpected behavior, one thing to check is to make sure you have the right language. Maybe we've moved forward to a new language, a new version of Racket, uh, and you haven't remembered to update your version of Dr. Racket for that. Okay, so let's go and uh, see how Dr. Racket expressions are formed. Imagine we want to add 2 and 3. In Dr. Racket, we have an open parenthesis, the function plus, a space, the argument 2, a space, the argument 3, and then a closed parenthesis. In Racket, every expression, every function call, starts with an open parenthesis. So we start with the open parenthesis. After the open parenthesis is going to be whatever function it is that we're trying to evaluate, followed by whatever arguments we need, separated by spaces. And then when we're done with the expression, we've got all the arguments that we need, then we have a closed parenthesis. So if we have open paren plus two, three, close paren, we say run, we find that the answer is indeed five. Um, now, white space in Racket is frequently optional. As long as it's clear where necessary components begin and end, you can add extra white space all you want. So in our case, we could have a bunch of white space at the beginning of the expression. We can have our open paren. We can have a bunch of white space after that, our plus. We can have arbitrary amounts of white space here. Have the two, more white space, then three, more white space, and then close parenthesis. And that will give us the same value this, with all this white space in it, will give us the same value as that expression. So if we say run, we get two fives. One from the first expression and one from the second. And so this shows us that white space can be inserted somewhat arbitrarily. This is sort of a weird example and it's pretty hard to read. A more plausible example is if we wanted to multiply 2 plus 3 and 8 plus 4, we could do that, but maybe for readability we want to actually put this expression on a line by itself, so we can hit return there, and now this extra white space here won't cause any problems. This will still multiply two expressions, this expression and this expression. And so if we hit run, we find that 2 plus 3 is still 5, and 2 plus 3 is 5, 8 plus 4 is 12, 5 times 12 is 60. So the value of this expression is 60. So we're allowed to insert additional white spaces, uh, space characters, tabs, returns, um, pretty much wherever we want, as long as we're not splitting up something that needs to remain together. Okay. 
Now, while this parenthesis and then function notation might look a little odd, as I mentioned earlier, it's actually a lot more consistent. Traditional math uh, is not terribly consistent in how it uses parentheses and where functions go. So we're used to, for example, the syntax f of 3, where f is some function, and this says f takes one argument 3. But we're also used to this syntax, which says plus is a function which gets the two arguments, 2 and 3 in this case, combines them into 5 and gives us the value 5. In this case, this function application is what's called prefix. The function goes before the arguments. This example, the function is what is called infix. The function goes in between the two arguments. And so traditional math is fairly inconsistent. Sometimes it uses prefix, sometimes it uses infix. Sometimes you need parentheses when you call a function, other times you don't. In Racket, it's always going to be the same. You always have an open paren, the function, the argument or arguments, and then a closed paren. You have the function, the arguments, I mean open paren, function, and the arguments. In Racket, it's always consistent. There are always parentheses around the outside, and the function always comes first, followed by the arguments separated by spaces. So once you're used to that notation, it's actually very powerful and actually very simple and nice to work with. That said, we don't always immediately adapt to that syntax because it isn't what we're used to. And so there are certain common mistakes that we can make. And so let's look for a second at what some of those are and how Dr. Racket will respond. So imagine, for example, that we forgot that functions are supposed to be prefix, and we actually put the function in an infix position between the arguments like this. What is Racket going to do? If I say run, well, Dr. Racket's not happy. It says function call expected a function after the open parenthesis but found a number. So what's it telling us? It's saying I saw an open parenthesis. After that, I was expecting a function. What did I get? I got a two. And a two is not a function. And it even highlighted the, where the problem was in red to tell us that this was the piece where it got confused. And so notice it didn't actually get to the fact that the plus was in the wrong place. It immediately became unhappy because the two was preceded by a parenthesis and it tried to treat it as a function. And so it didn't know what to do. Let's imagine as an alternative that I didn't even have the parentheses in there. I just did straight up, you know, sort of standard math, 2 plus 3. So what are we going to get? It said, plus, expected a function call, but there is no open parenthesis before this function. And it highlighted the plus sign. So what's happening here is it got a function. It says, I know plus is a function. And I'm expecting a paren before a, fun a function, an open parenthesis before a function, and there isn't one. Which suggests that actually it was happy with the 2. And it is, because 2 is a perfectly legal expression. If I have 2 and 3 here, and I say run, that's actually fine. The value of this expression is 5. The value of 2 is 2, not surprisingly. And the value of 3 is 3. So this is actually OK. And I can even put them on the same line, and I'll get the same output. I've got three expressions, this one, this one, and this one. It evaluates those expressions and gives me these results. But if I put a plus in the middle, then it is unhappy because it sees this plus, that's a function, it's expecting an open parenthesis, and there isn't one. And so we get an error message. Now let's imagine that we put the plus first. Uh, so we have basically the right order, but we've left out the parentheses. Here we get the same problem that we had before. It gets to the plus and it says, hey, that's a function but there's no open parenthesis before that function, and I don't know what to do. Now, one other thing that's different between Racket and more traditional mathematics is in traditional math, you can have lots of extra parentheses, um, and they won't cause a problem. So you could say 2 plus 3, or you could say 2 plus 3, or you could even say 2 plus 3 
and that would all be the same thing. Those would all be five. In racket, because parentheses have a very particular meaning, they announce that we're about to have a function call. We cannot have additional parentheses in racket expressions. We try to do this where we've got an extra pair of parentheses around the two and two extra two pairs of parentheses around the three. If I try to run that, it says expected a function after the open parenthesis but found a number. So the problem here again here is that because there's an open parenthesis it thinks the next thing ought to be a function, but it's not a function. It's a number, and so it's not happy. So it's going to tell us that as an indication that we really didn't want those parentheses there. So we need to get rid of those, and then, boom, everything's going to be good. Okay? So that gives us a little review of the racket syntax. When we call a function, we have an open parenthesis, followed by the function, followed by whatever arguments that function needs, separated by spaces, followed by a closed parenthesis. That's always going to be the form of a function call in Racket. We will use that all the way through. Um, later on, we'll see how to define our own functions, and we define our own functions. They will go here just like plus does, and it'll all be exactly the same. So you only have to remember one structure, but it's a slightly unusual structure, so you do have to make the effort to get that in your head. Okay, well, thank you very much.